Hello everyone. Well, <laughs> today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday. The U.S. government moved inexorably down to the wire and over the cliff. But meanwhile, there was better news out of Italy and Japan. That leaves the U.S. as the biggest train wreck in town for now and is likely to weigh on the dollar while boosting the yen and the Swiss franc. The picture is mixed for the high beta currencies. Lower U.S. interest rates should, in theory, boost them, but risk aversion is likely to weigh on them. So we don't know yet how this is going to pan out over the near term. Now, political analysts say that a shutdown of two to five days of the, for the U.S. government is likely, but I'd say one to two weeks is entirely possible, given the, the animosity on both sides. Shutdowns are normally are actually quite normal in the U.S. The federal government has closed 17 times since 1976. Now, usually, U.S. Treasury bonds are the ultimate safe haven investment, and even during a government shutdown, I'd expect U.S. bond yields to decline. Moreover, a shutdown makes it more likely that the Fed will continue with its asset purchases through the October meeting. Lower rates could help to boost risk assets around the world and prove positive for the high beta, relatively high interest rate currencies, particularly the Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar. Historically, the dollar has declined ahead of shutdowns and recovered afterwards, so if the, uh, debt, if the debt ceiling problem is resolved, there may be only a delay, not a total disruption, of the recent U.S. rally. What is new this time, though, is the struggle to raise the debt ceiling, which, until the advent of the, the Tea Party, the debt ceiling was a, a non-event, a routine uh, event that attracted no attention. The risk of the shutdown segueing into the fight over the debt ceiling as a totally unpredictable element to, the, to this crisis remains to be seen whether U.S. Treasuries and the dollar will still be safe havens if there's a risk that the government may not be able to make its coupon payments. If that were to happen, it could have a devastating effect on the perceived creditworthiness of the U.S. government. It would add a risk premium that would push U.S. interest rates permanently higher, thereby lowering the, the uh, rate of growth in the U.S., and it would reduce the dominance of the dollar as the world's re reserve currency. The possibility of such an intensive risk-off scenario is likely to boost uh, the yen and the Swiss franc in the first instance and to weigh on the growth currencies over, over the long, over, after that. Although, uh, we should know, I should note that uh, as one of the few AAA current countries left, Australia could benefit from the crisis after all. We, we just don't know yet. Emerging market currencies, though, remain vulnerable to risk aversion and a flight to safety if the U.S. hits that debt ceiling. The Brazilian real, South African rand, Indian rupee, Turkish, uh, Turkish lira, and the uh, Indonesian rupiah, dubbed the, the fragile five by the financial world, are probably the most vulnerable currencies. Now, there's, there's a, a lot going on in the world. It's very complicated. Please see our website for full de details, the, the comment on the website, including comments on Italian politics, the better-than-expected Japanese Tancom, and the Reserve Bank of Australia's meeting results. This is Marshall Gittler, head of Global FX Strategy at IFX, wishing you solid trading.